recently, the World Bank in October of last year released a report in which they estimate that overfishing costs the world economy $50 billion every year and has cost the economy $2 trillion in the last 30 years. Hello, Life Protecting viewers, and welcome to Planet Earth, Our Loving Home. On this edition, we examine the very serious problem of overfishing and other harmful human activities that severely threaten the continued existence of our fish co-inhabitants. Eu mergulho nessas águas do nosso litoral há mais de 30 anos, desde os 7, 8 anos de idade. E hoje a gente vê muito menos peixe do que via antigamente. Due to intensive fishing over the recent decades, it is estimated that worldwide a staggering 90% of the ocean's largest fish are now gone. Numerous species are at grave risk of extinction. A study conducted by the International Union for Conservation of Nature found almost a third of sharks and rays are at risk of disappearing permanently. Today, Dr. Guillermo Moreno, head of the World Wildlife Funds, or WWF's Hong Kong Marine Program, Dr. Yvonne Sadevi, a marine scientist and professor at the University of Hong Kong, and Dr. Jeff Hutchings, a biology professor from Dalhousie University, Canada, among others, share their expert knowledge and observations about the survival of fish in our seas. The level of depletion is really reaching um, scary levels around our oceans. Um, here is a picture showing the east coast of the US and the west coast of Europe. And uh, in red, we have got places where in the 1900s there used to be many fish, and the levels uh, marked in blue show very low levels of fish. In a matter of 99 years, we have managed to deplete fish stocks in these areas. In the um, 1980s, we found that we were catching more fish than the fisheries could produce. And that's a state of overfishing. And yet we continued to develop our fisheries to catch more fish. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimated in 2002 there were 4 million fishing vessels worldwide. With many fleets employing highly environmentally destructive methods, such as trawling or dragging large nets behind boats, and possessing high-tech equipment to quickly and easily locate schools of fish, fish have been disappearing at an alarming pace. In Canada, we have depleted Atlantic cod off Newfoundland, off the northeast coast of Canada, by 99%. What does that mean in terms of numbers of individuals? Well, it means we've depleted more than 2 billion spawning individuals. And another way to compare that is to take 2 billion and multiply it by the average weight of cod. And 2 billion cod is equal to about 27 million humans. The second species is called the American place. This is a flatfish. It's like a sole or a flounder or a halibut. And off the northeast coast of Canada, this once widely distributed fish has declined 96%. It is currently happening all over the world, in Antarctic waters, in the Indian, Atlantic, Pacific, Arctic, in every ocean in the world right now. So what this means is that eventually we're going to end up with no fish in the oceans at this rate. Governments are financially supporting fishing industries, which also fuels the destruction of the ever-dwindling fish populations. One of the key ones is something called uh, subsidies. Many fisheries around the world are provided with funding from their governments, which help those fisheries continue, even when there's not enough fish. I'll give you an example from Hong Kong. The Hong Kong government provides a fuel subsidy for diesel for fishermen. That enables fishermen to continue fishing even if there are fewer and fewer fish. So subsidies is a massive problem. But there's no question in my mind that if humans do not change their current practices of fishing, and if nations do not do so, 
then almost certainly we will be exceedingly few fish by mid-century. Beside fishing, fish are also threatened by other dangers like marine pollution and coastal development. The losses that we're seeing in our sea is mainly caused by overfishing as far as we know. However, in some areas, there can be quite high levels of pollution. There might be industrial pollution or farming pollution or pollution that comes from uh, untreated sewage, for example, um, as we see here in Hong Kong in Victoria Harbour. If you have a lot of coastal development, of course, we need to reclaim land. But that sea uh, where we, we take land from, those areas are very important for many species as nursery areas and areas where the little fish or the little uh, shellfish need to grow in their early life. And so if we remove those and damage those due to construction, this also can have an effect on the ecosystem. So there are many different factors which are all together, coming together to, to cause this problem of overfishing and, and loss of, from the sea. When we return, we will have further thoughts from these experts about the precarious state of ocean fish. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. to stop it somehow, I mean, just stop the fishing. The government has to forbid fishing because it's too important to our survival to delay any further. Welcome back to Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, where we are exploring the threats that overfishing and other human activities pose to the global oceanic ecosystem. When we overfish, we lose, first of all, the largest fish. We lose the biggest animals in the sea. We lose whales, we lose sharks, we lose the big groupers, we lose the big croakers. These are all part of an ecosystem, a system which works together. And if you remove one part of an ecosystem, you're going to lose other parts of that ecosystem. So for example, if you lose certain kinds of fish, uh, maybe it can affect populations of dolphins or other species. In the end, they'll all be ghost waters. Ghost waters is a term used to describe areas of the ocean that have been overfished and this is resulting in dec decimation of species around the world and this is resulting in the um, death of our oceans. We will lose species from the sea. Um, we will lose or greatly degrade the ecosystems within the sea. So there are some very serious and severe penalties that we will face if we don't do something about this crisis today. Some recent studies demonstrate that overfishing could increase the risk of dead zones or low oxygen areas in the ocean where little to no life can survive. Overfishing has caused the disappearance of sardines off the coast of Namibia that once consumed the plankton in the waters. Without sardines, plankton sink to the bottom of the ocean, decompose, and consume all the oxygen, thereby causing harmful greenhouse gases like methane and hydrogen sulfide to rise to the surface, killing huge amounts of marine life, such as the estimated 2 million hake in the process. So the point is that with overfishing, we deeply disturb the ecosystem. We lose a lot of the species that are important to us, that we love to see, and we lose an environment which is a very wonderful and beautiful environment. Some have the mistaken belief that consuming factory farmed fish is an eco-friendly measure. Nothing could be further from the truth. Rather, this practice is hastening the decline of all fish populations. Farmed fish is not a sustainable option. And the primary reason is that, depending on the farmed fish, it takes anywhere from two and a half to five kilograms of wild fish to make one kilogram of farmed fish. And that's certainly true, for example, of farmed Atlantic salmon, when it takes, as I say, uh, a four to one ratio of wild fish to make one kilogram of farmed fish. And that's because the farmed fish, as they're growing, they're being fed pellets. And these pellets are made from other fish, such as anchovies sardines, herrings. In a recently published paper in World Watch magazine entitled Livestock and Climate Change, 
scientists concluded that 51% plus of all human-caused global greenhouse gas emissions are from the livestock industry, which includes fish factory farming. In what ways is climate change affecting marine ecosystems? Global warming and climate change, that's changed uh, temperatures in the oceans, it's, it's starting to change uh, circulation patterns, it's changing the acidity of the oceans, it's changing the levels of the oceans, they're rising, it's changing the frequency of storms. There's now more winter storms, greater tidal surges, and of course, whatever happens in the oceans ultimately affects the weather on land. So there are all sorts of ways in which these two primary human stressors, uh, global warming and overfishing, have been affecting the health of our oceans. And there's no question that uh, a healthy human environment demands a healthy ocean and that if we um, seriously harm the health of the oceans, we will only be harming ourselves. During a November 30th, 2008 telephone interview, with East Coast FM in Ireland, Supreme Master Ching Hai pointed out that the simplest and most effective way for an individual to save our oceans and fish friends is to adopt a plant-based diet. To stop this destructive practice of fishing, uh, the solution is vegetarian diet. No fishy stuff in our meals. The sea offers us plenty of better food choices wide varieties of super healthy and nutritious sea plants. We can even live on it forever. We must protect a living and healthy sea as it relates to our living and healthy self. I think we cannot live without the sea. The protection of the oceans depends on our eco-wise choices. May we all quickly adopt the compassionate organic vegan lifestyle to safeguard our beloved marine co-inhabitants and ourselves. O planeta ele não ele está se transformando e nós somos uh, componentes atores ativos nessa transformação. Todas as pessoas, independente de onde vivem, em cidades grandes, capitais, elas têm imensa responsabilidade. Todos nós. We wish to thank Drs. Jeff Hutchings, Guillermo Moreno, and Yvonne Sadevi, as well as the many other individuals around the globe seeking to preserve our oceanic ecosystems. Let all marine life be treasured and respected always. For more information, please visit the following websites. Dr. Hutchings, myweb.dal.ca forward slash J Hutch. Dr. Moreno and WWF Hong Kong, www.wwf.org.hk. Dr. Sadevi, www.hku.hk forward slash ecology forward slash ys dot htm. Considerate viewers, thank you for your kind company on today's edition of Planet Earth, Our Loving Home. Up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May we all be embraced by the love and light of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE 